Well, we are here at the round table this year, and this is probably three and a half decades of wonderful friends and brethren and sisters who really come together. We want to seek God about how we can best uh, carry out what is on your heart, oh God, in this hour. And um, we are honored to have with us just for about nine, ten minutes here, Rick Joyner from Morningstar Ministries, the man that is the catalyst to bring us together each year. And uh, Rick, I just want to ask that you would share what's on your heart, please. What have we been discussing? And people are discouraged. People are distressed today and they don't know where to turn. Can you give us some hope, encouragement? Tell us what is going on here and what can we be doing in this critical hour? Well, you know, there is a very simple solution to discouragement or to depression. You know, a lot of Christians today are depressed because they're worried. It looks like the world's falling apart. Guess what it is? We were told it would, <laughs> you know, but it, it says in his presence is fullness of joy. So if we lose our joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if we've lost that, we've drifted from his presence. And sometimes you can watch the news a little bit too much, and it's going to impart more fear, doubt, anxiety, all these things. And you know, the scripture says, be anxious for nothing. How can we know that, truly know and believe that the King of Kings has got this? He is not up there wringing his hands, says he sits in the heavens and laughs. I remember reading where we said are supposed to be seated with him there. And if he's laughing, we should be laughing. And that's one of the things he showed me a while back. He said how in these days of some of the greatest times of trouble there have ever been, his people are going to be shockingly happy. He said, we would be so happy, people would think we were retarded. We don't understand what's going on. We're out of touch. We're going to be the ones really in touch. And uh, so we cannot lose our peace. You know, the peace of God is given to us to arbitrate, to keep us on the path. And if you're losing your peace by watching the news or whatever, fast from the news for a while. The world's not going to fall apart because you didn't watch the news. And, I, you know, I started a couple of years ago when I felt too much of that getting on me. Uh, I went, I checked my app once a day, uh, hit, get the headlines, anything interesting, I may dig down into it. But I found that the Lord gets to me the news that I need, the information that I need to do the job that he's called me to do. And I don't want to be trying to carry the burdens for jobs I haven't been given. That's his job. You know, that's over my pay grade in this. But the, we really are, you know, um, you know, you can never lose your joy. And when it's you start losing it, you've got to understand. He never leaves us or forsakes us. So if, if we've gotten distant from him, so that we're not in his presence and not in the fullness of joy. He didn't move. We did. And it's up to us to get back in his presence. Rick, what do you say today? Um, you know, the Asbury, this uh, move of God and what's starting to go, this movie, uh, uh, the Jesus revolution. And I mean, people are saying, is this real? Is this, what do you say to people right now that are looking on saying, what are we supposed to do? What should we be doing about this? Well, uh, you know, to me, that was a very, is a very exciting development in our country. I think it fulfills some things the Lord showed us prophetically when he showed that he was going to bring, you know, he was going to move upon millennials, especially, uh, and I think it is mostly touching them. Uh, it, it's touching youth in a way that we remember, you know, if we came through the Jesus movement and, and all of that, that so many exciting things breaking out. And I think we're seeing a replay of that. But I think it's going to be bigger and better. I think what's happening now eclipses what happened in the first Asbury revival in 1970. It's just been explosive. 
uh, and that which shows the hunger. People coming from around the world just with the hope of having a touch from God, getting in his presence. You know, we don't have to do that. We're supposed to be abiding in his presence, uh, abiding in him. But to me, it's so encouraging that people are doing that. It's already got the marks of, a, I believe, an authentic, true revival from God in the sense that just news of it going out is sparking revivals all over the place. That was true of the Welsh revival. A letter from Wales from someone sitting in the Welsh revival would strike somebody across the planet. They would open the letter and revival would break out on them. It was a, a living force of the Holy Spirit. And the, this Asbury revival to me has all the hallmarks of a true authentic move of God. I really uh, am very excited about it. We've got some of our former students and all there. They're, they're going there now to set up tents and everything, try to, you know, uh, accommodate the crowds and, and stuff. Uh, oh, you know, praise the Lord. Yes. But listen, it, and there's more coming. There mm -hmm. are more scenes to this movie, uh, but this is a very brilliant, exciting one. Rick, yeah. I, 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 I have to ask this. I know you have done a magnificent book talking about Marxism. And some people say, oh, what do you mean? Communism? I mean, that was that was the 50s. And could you just take a little time? What is the book you've done on Marxism? And we want to encourage people to make sure they get it. What can you give us a little synopsis of it, bro? Yeah, um, you know, I actually considered myself a Marxist when I was, you know, young for a short period of time uh, until I actually read Marxist books. That's the craziest stuff I ever read in my life. But I got captured by, you know, at one of the big demonstrations I was at, anti-war demonstrations back then, they had, I passed by the Marxist activists and some of their girls were some really good looking. I thought, this is interesting. <laughs> That's what drew me in. I wasn't really that political at the time, but I was sincere. So I said, if I'm gonna be a Marxist, I'm gonna know what that is. And I read it and I said, this is bizarre. It's insanity. I was about 19 years old when, I'm, when this happened. Um, I was actually in the military at the time. I could have been arrested just for being at those demonstrations, but, uh, you know, I, being uh, in the Navy, when I got out to sea, I went and checked out the, you know, Marx's ultimate book, The Capitalist, and read that and started reading others and by Trotsky and Lenin, and, and it was evil. It wasn't just wrong, it was really deeply evil. I believe, and I didn't know the Lord at the time, but I believed it was absolutely the worst threat to us being the hu human beings we could be, free and creative, and and that, um, anyway, I became a real anti-communist after just studying it, and I've been studying it ever since. And, you know, of course, you know, there came across their 45-point plan which devised in 1930 for taking over America, for destroying our Republic and bringing America under the communist yoke. And I saw how they had implemented it. This was even read into the congressional record. They were so out in your face about how they were gonna do this to us. And then they did it and nobody did anything. <clears throat> History teaches us clearly, if somebody says they want to do you in or do you harm, you had better pay attention to them. You had better take it seriously. And uh, and I think you, you know, basic military principle, you cannot destroy an enemy you do not see. And uh, I think most people do not realize, I believe most Marxist operatives in America don't know that's what they are. They really are not that educated and true Marxist leaders don't want their operatives to know what they're doing. Don't know, want them to know they're Marxist. Uh, Hillary 
Clinton made the comment one time when so, she got an email from one of her staff or whatever about these people really understand what we're doing. And she fired back, I don't want them to understand. I just want them to be obedient. And that's Marxism. Well, you know, in our universities, they're teaching what Marxism is. And it's the exact opposite of Marxism. The exact opposite. Lenin boasted about that. He boasted about the things he was putting out about Marxism. Marxism, their propaganda, did not have one single truth in it. And we would still eat it up. But, you know, it is, I think, the father of deception, which was the first thing the Lord warned us when he was asked about the end of the age. Don't be deceived. Marxism is the ultimate and most evil deception of all. I believe it has already deeply infiltrated us, but it can be undone quickly. And the name of the book and tell the site where people can go and get it because this is a superb piece of you can get it on amazon or you know the morning star website morningstarministries.org or dot com you can um it's titled marxism strategy for destroying america and i basically focus it on what they're trying to do us but it's a strategy they use a bit against every nation all right, would you pray for us, Rick, as we close, please? This is so important. Yeah. Lord, we ask you to give us eyes to see. Lord, give us your eyes to see with. We ask you for the spirit of truth to come upon our nation. Lord, mm. I know that a whole lot that is being manifested today is your spirit of truth. And we just thank you for the way you're illuminating so many things and we ask you to please continue and examine us examine us and to keep us on the path and lord i pray for everyone who hears this who watches this that you said the path of the righteous is like the light of the dawn that gets brighter and brighter lord make our paths clear and so that we know we're still on the path because our path is getting brighter and brighter and more clear. In Jesus' name, amen.